Hi, my name is John Winings. Welcome to Northern Illinois University's Fall 2020 course, Computer Science 463, Computer System Architecture and Organization. In this video, I will show you how to find all of the course materials and keep up to date with any changes and announcements. Okay, the first thing you want to do is to find out how to get to the course webpage. Go to uh, www.cs.niu.edu, which is the Computer Science uh, Department homepage. Click on Faculty and Staff. My name is John Winans. I'm second to last under Faculty down here. And you then go to my website, faculty.cs.niu slash tilde Winans. There's me down here. The classes that I'm teaching will be listed. One of them will be CompSci 463. This page will be where you get all of your homework assignments and you have contact information on how to get a hold of me and your TAs. The three TAs will be covering all the sections of this course. You can get help from either one of the four of us. Up here, I will put some announcements. The critical ones will be in Blackboard. I'll show you about that in a minute. You need to check this website very often because there will be changes. There will be additional assignments will be posted here. New lecture videos will be linked to from here and so on. There will be one midterm in this course and one final exam. The dates will be finalized with it at least a week in advance. I mark the week within which they will be given on the tentative schedule here. The syllabus for this course, you can think of it as the official rules of the class, uh, is linked to from right here. There are no required textbooks for this course. The material you need will be given in the course webpage and Blackboard. Your grade will be determined like this. Read and understand these rules, okay? The account that I speak of in this section of the syllabus refers to that which you use to access Blackboard, okay? Now the account down here, your Unix account, is independent of your university account. The homework on this class can be executed on the machines named Turing and Hopper. That's turing.cs.niu.edu and hopper.cs.niu.edu. Both of those machines are identical. You can use either one. When I refer to Hopper, I mean both Hopper and or Turing and vice versa, okay? In order to access this machine, you use the same ZID you use for the university access to Blackbird. However, the password on your Unis account is completely independent from the rest of the university. If you don't know your password, there will be instructions that will be posted on Blackboard and how to initially get your password the first time. If you have an account that's been on that machine in the past, it should still exist. Just log in as you have in the past. If you have a password problem, don't call ITS because they don't operate this uh, these machines here, okay? You need to contact Duffin at cs.niu.edu and or uh, Berezin. This is Kirk Duffin and this is John uh, Berezinski, okay? If you need help, contact your TAs and or the instructor. Regarding cheating, we will not tolerate it. If there is cheating, there will be consequences. All right, so what else do we have here? How to hand in your homework assignments. Here's a write-up on how you're supposed to uh, hand in your assignments. This is the only way to hand in an assignment. We will not accept them if you email them to me directly or your TA or you post them into Blackboard. None of those methods will be considered handing in your assignment. You must turn them in this way, otherwise we cannot grade them. You can submit your program more than once, you know, after you send it in. Oops, I made a mistake. I want to do it again. Just send it in again, all right? We keep the last three that you submit. So if you submit it five times, we'll only keep the last three on record. And the very last one that you submit will be the one that we grade. Some other handy things. Don't use evil file names. Look in here. See these rules. We will not accept any files uh, on, on this system that violate these rules. All right. That's on you for naming things poorly. There are documentation standards for this course, and you don't follow these, you will be severely penalized. We'll take off the, the documentation points. These are fairly simple to follow. How do you indent your code? How do you name your variables? These conventions are not mine personally. These are widely adopted conventions. 
most places that you work will want you to use one or two of these conventions that we outline in here. This is not unique to NIU or anything else. These are just widely adopted standards. You want to go with the flow. Otherwise, people won't be able to understand your code. This I feel very strongly about down here. We talk about a system called Doxygen, and you make doc boxes like this, and I mean exactly like this. You put two stars after the slash up here. You talk about why you saw fit to write a function and what it does. You put at param like this, and for each one of your arguments to your function, you tell us what the return value is going to be, and you use this format. And there's a link down here somewhere that goes to the Doxygen website. Wow, I should have put that down here. In here somewhere, let's go back to the top of the page. Let's do a search for Doxygen right there. There's a link to the Doxygen website here uh, if you want to know more about it. What it is is it's a system that goes through your source code, extracts all these comments, and generates a website of uh, documentation that's formatted very nicely. That's why you need to use these at signs and things like that. There's other ways to use it. I understand. Use this, ver use this style for this course. All right, so this is how your documentation is supposed to work for this course. What else do we got in here? If you don't know how to access the, uh, the servers and you're on Windows, I feel for you, um, you can use a system called Putty. There are many ways to do this. One simple way is to download a system called Putty. There's some information on how to uh, use it, how to install it, how to configure it. And then there's a system called FileZilla that you can use to move files back and forth between your PC and either Turing or Hopper, okay? So that's what this link here is all about when we saw how to install Putty FileZilla. Then there's a link down here. Remember, we're running uh, uh, Linux on Hopper and Turing, which is a Unix-style uh, operating system. And there's a couple of basic commands you need to know in order to function on this. If you've never used it before, here's the minimum set of things you need to know. All right, and you can click on these, and it'll tell you, hey, here's how you type in the command and what it does and things like that, all right? Some of these, man some of these uh, links have a little bit more information. I'm sure Nano has a whole bunch of information. This is a very simple text editor. It's easy to learn, but it's cumbersome to use. If you use an editor like Vim or uh, Emacs, these are more complicated to learn how to use, but they're designed specifically for writing software. In the long run, you're much better off learning a, an editor that's designed to be used for the purpose that you need to use it for. If you want to use editors on your desktop, knock yourself out. It's fine. You need to be able to move your files back and forth between your desktop and Hopper or Turing accordingly. And that's one of the things you can do with uh, FileZilla. I'm on the wrong web page. I was looking for this link up here, Putty and FileZilla, right? So you can move your files back and forth between your uh, system and the server, all right? Here's some information about the debugger. You may or may not need that in this course. Uh, there's some information about how to use it. So there's links on how to use uh, Linux when you connect in using Putty or an, an SSH client. If you have a Linux system at home or you're on a Mac, uh, SSH is just built in. You can ignore all the all this uh, Putty uh, stuff. You can also avoid it on Windows 10 if you install something called WSL, but you're going to have to Google around for videos on how to do that. If you don't know anything about how to do it, just throw Putty on. It's the easiest, shortest path to the goal. This is, and I stress, a tentative schedule. I'm going to attempt to maintain this sequence of events, uh, of topics for each week as the semester progresses. Um, I've got to record all these as videos. Normally, we do these live in lectures. If, if uh, time does not permit us to get all these topics, these ones down here might slip off the end, okay? The midterm and the final exam will be on these weeks shown here. And here, the assignment links will appear right here. So the first assignment is due the first week. I'll talk about that in another video. As more assignments are posted, there will be more links in here. Here's a note about using um, Macs and WSL and stuff like that. Uh, the short of it is you can do anything you want and run it on whatever machine you want, but we will grade your program on Hopper, period. 
That's where your grading will be. If your program doesn't compile and run on Hopper, you failed, all right? You need to test your programs on Hopper, okay? Enough said. Here is how each one of the lectures will be presented. There will be this video that I'm recording right now will be the introduction lecture right here. Uh, the next lecture would be the history of computing and some links here that will go to, in this case, these are just Wikipedia links because in the video here, I use Wikipedia to show fo uh, pictures and things of various machines and components. And some of the links here will go to the web pages that you see in the video up here, just for your reference. As you move along, sometimes there'll also be handouts that I will provide from my faculty web page here, in addition to other web links. So the web links are off campus links. These are on campus links, so to speak. All right. Sometimes lectures will have multiple parts if they get to be too long. All right. So, um, uh, each one of these subjects will end up being presented in one of these sections like this. This one in particular is a, a weird handout in that what it really is, is it's a manuscript that I've been working on. I just call together all my notes from teaching assembly language programming and architecture and organization and other subjects. And I'm trying to put together one single book and I give it away. This link goes to GitHub. So let me show you how to get this thing, right? Because when you go to GitHub, you end up in a page like this. Well, where's the book? Well, this top thing up here right now is the most recent release, okay? I'm in my GitHub project called RVALP. I say RVALP. It stands for RISC V Assembly Language Programming. This top link right here is the most recent release. Apparently, I updated it two days ago to tweak it for this course. If you go down here where it says Assets and click this little arrow, you see book.pdf. This right here is a copy of uh, let's go ahead and open it in Firefox. It's a copy of the manuscript that you will see me using from time to time, okay? So that's how you get your own copy of this. I think we're done with my faculty page, right? So like I said, these handouts here are things that I've created. These web links down here will be off site uh, links to further material, all right? So as more and more lectures are recorded and posted, you'll see more and more links down there, okay? Okay, what else do we got on here? That's it. Let's move over to Blackboard. If you go to uh, webcourses.niu.edu, this link right here, and log in, you'll end up with your list of courses that you're enrolled in. This is my view as an instructor, so there might be some more links and things in the menus than you might be used to seeing. But nonetheless, there will be a home page, an announcements page, and an assessments page. The home page is a summary of announcements and things that are due, like assignments that have been posted and things like that. All right. And the announcements in detail will appear up here. When I'm done with this video, I'll post an announcement in here and you'll there will hopefully be a link back to the uh, Blackboard website as well as my faculty page. So you don't have to type all that stuff in. All right. Assessments down here will include a folder for quizzes and exams. This will be what your exams and quizzes will be taken for this course. All right. If you cannot get to Blackboard, contact your TA or myself immediately. This is critical. Otherwise, you won't be able to take the quizzes. All right. So that's how you can find links to all the materials that are needed for this course. See you next time. Bye.